thank you, Dan. We are back here in Massachusetts where UMass has that four-point lead over the Raging Cajuns. And one of the things that has helped them get there is Harper Williams, who really came on toward the second part of that uh, first half. Really strong down low. He's too tough to handle with just one player. Now watch this move. He's a left-handed player. Ordinarily, he'll swing to his right. Not so. Nice backdoor move that time. And Williams with 11 points in the first half. I don't think they can handle him with just one defensive player. And USL uh, moved the ball very well uh, also uh, during the course of that first half. When the Raging Cajuns were patient on offense, spread the floor, took their time to get a good shot, ordinarily it meant a high percentage shot. Now watch them run their offense. Good job right here, patient. Look at the defense. The defense is spread, not a lot of defensive help capable right here. Good job by Griggs. Mackey on, perfect three for three. Shots like that, that's high percentage. When they spread the offense, did a good job. Take a look at the first half statistics. Both teams shooting very well, and everything looks pretty identical. Defense has got to pick up for both teams in the second half. Shooting excellent for everybody concerned. Rebounding pretty close. Turnovers, not a big factor for either club here in the first half. And there are the leading scorers uh, spreading it around both teams, although the two Williams boys for uh, UMass, Mike Williams coming off the bench with 10, and he was spectacular. USL, good job of spreading their offense around, and UMass, so Harper Williams, 5 for 9 in the first half, picking up again on that very high percentage pace. But, Al, I think the first team that can come out and really put the defensive clamp should be the team to win this game because both teams were porous defensively in the first half. We'll see if they can tighten it up. And ironically, in the first half, University of Massachusetts with 20 fast break points, only two for USL, and really the Cajuns were the ones that were supposed to run. They didn't force it. They just beat USL back down the floor. A lot of times it took advantage of what was there. So we kick it off here in the second half. That's Michael Allen going in and nice pass to Hill. But he can't get it. Boudreaux underneath. Excellent pass by Barbie underneath. Jerome Malloy is fouled. Starks got him down low. Byron Starks. And that's what I'm talking about. UMass just does a better job so far tonight of pushing the ball down the floor, beating USL back. That time the initial break was stopped, but they didn't pick up. John Calipari's team very optimistic. When it's there, they've taken advantage of it. They've shown their quickness tonight. That is Malloy at the line. He gets the first one. And I think for UMass, they haven't been able to go on that big run where they've opened it up 10, 12 to 2, 12 to 4 run to really open things up, get the crowd involved. For the most part, the crowd has been somewhat quiet because USL is answered every time they've gotten in trouble. Well, he hits two, he's shooting 81% from the line, so that's normal for him. And it's a six point lead, the biggest in a while. They beat the pressure, and Todd Hill misses the jam. Oh my. That will get the crowd involved in a hurry. Roll underneath. He follows. It'll go. And the lead reaches eight. USL's got to be real careful right now, Al, because UMass is in the midst of a run right now. They're in dangerous territory, and that was a dangerous pass. Byron Starks can't get it to go. Here come the Minutemen. Lou Rowe. Decides better against that shot. But Williams underneath will get it. The lead is now 10, and Marty Fletcher may be thinking timeout. No, he wants his team to push it. This is an important trip right now for USM. Marty Fletcher not going to call timeout. This is a very, very crucial offensive possession. Michael Allen, when they need a big hoop, he's the guy that gets it, and he draws the foul. Got a three-point opportunity that time, Allen, as you mentioned. He just took over. He's the smallest guy on the floor right now. And the foul is on Harper Williams. Second foul on Williams, and we got some replacements. Mike Williams comes in again, who did so well in the first half, and also Dana Dingle, who gave them some very solid minutes in that first half. Very talented freshman. And John Calipari's got another one that's sitting out through to Prop 48. Mr. Bright, one of the leading high school players in the nation last year. Looking forward to suiting up next year for the UMass Minutemen. Nice to have those guys just sitting around waiting to play for you. It's a seven-point lead, a very, very big three-point effort by Michael Allen. As John said, that was an important trip for them. Barbie looking for the shot. He will not get it, and he will draw a foul. He will shoot two. Mackey on with the foul. 
number two on Mackeon and Marty Fletcher looking for some answers. Wants to keep his team in there now because, as you said, a run now would be a big problem. And now the important thing is you can't lose your patience with 18-12 to go in the game. You don't put the first shot up every time. Be a little more selective. Get a higher percentage shot where you're going to go to the foul line or a good chance to put yourself in offensive rebounding position. Tony Barbie looking to make the second. Let's see if UMass comes out full court pressure after the main free throw. They do. You called it. And they have Allen in a little trap that handles it well. Look how well they got back on defense, though. Well, that's a key if you're going to press full court. Got to get back. Carol Boudreaux gets two. Harper Williams wanted the charge, but it wasn't there. The first time these two teams have ever met in basketball, and they're putting on a good show. And that's not the shot you want to see Harper Williams shoot. Takes him right out of the rebounding position. The lead is seven. Williams. Todd Hill from 10 feet, and he gets it. Todd Hill with his eighth point. And they need points from him in this game. Well, I'm also impressed right now with the poise that USL is showing. They are not rattled even when they got down. They're a well-coached team, and they have, they're on a three-game winning streak, as we said. The three of those wins uh, have been in the Sun Belt Conference, where they're five and three now, still within striking distance of New Orleans. They're undefeated, but the Cajuns are in third place in their league. There is Barbie. And all of a sudden, those perimeter shots aren't dropping, and the Cajun... Cajuns are getting their share of rebounds. One shot and done right now for UMass. No offensive boards. Macchione draws the foul number four on Tony Barbie. Very significant moment perhaps in this game. That's tough because Barbie, very, very versatile performer. Certainly one of their offensive leaders. And now he's got to sit down with 16.55 to go. Along with Harper Williams, Kennard Robinson and uh, Lou Rowe come in. That's a long, long time, 16 minutes, when uh, one of your key men has four fouls. And the problem when you bring him back in with six or eight minutes to go, he's been sitting down. You wonder how quickly he can get back in the flow. Back in with seven points in this game. He came in averaging only 5.1, so he's had a good offensive game for them. He's normally their defensive specialist. Six, 190 pound senior from Gonzalez, Louisiana. Now Mike Williams, who scored 10 in the first half, may look to do some offensive work. Just where you'd really like to get it inside, get that high percentage shot. You're going to spread the floor a little bit. Three point lead for Massachusetts. Look at the motion. UMass always in constant motion. They do a good job running you off picks. If you turn your head immediately, you're running right into somebody's chest. USL, USL staying in the man-to-man. -man. They've been in that much tonight. Good work by Starks defensively. Right. No, bad pass, and Mike Williams will go to the hoop. It's good. 12 points for Mike Williams. Count it, and chalk up a foul. That's the second time tonight we've seen that little ball fake where the defensive man has bought it and he's gone right up with his shot. That's a big play because it they were turning out, falling out of bounds, and this is a dying duck right there that Williams does a good job picking. Watch the ball fake. Turn his back. That's, that's like a defensive back in football, turning your back on the quarterback. Bad things are going to happen to you quickly. That's for sure. He's done it twice now. The next time you got to make him throw the ball, pass him. Five point lead for Massachusetts, and uh, Mike Williams goes to the line. And he makes it. So make the lead six. Wholesale changes for the Cajuns. Pressure, almost a steal. Fred Lilly could have been a backcourt there. They didn't call it. Terrible pass taken by Kennard Robinson. Got away with one, but not for long. So all the reserves now feeling the pressure. Bad shot by Michael Williams. And who is the arrow pointing to? Well, when we come back, we'll have more. Six-point lead for UMass. Time here on ESPN. I'm Al Bernstein along with John Albright. We have got a good one going here, one in which the momentum has swung back and forth uh, a bunch of times in the second half. And Massachusetts got the benefit of that last 
Carroll for possession. And that's Mike Williams looking inside. Zone look right now for the Raging Cajuns. That's a good job of surrounding Harper Williams with multiple bodies. They change, they change defenses a lot, and it produces a steal by Allen. A little late with his pass to Starks, and that created that missed layup. Help. Byron Starks a little late, and Michael Allen knows he made a mistake. He's a little distressed with himself. He knows that uh, he should have gotten that pass a little earlier to Starks. That and Todd Hill, if he would have quit the finger roll and gone up strong, it would have an easy shot. A little too much mustard that time. They call him Thrill Hill that time a little too much. Nobody's missed the uh, free throw in the second half. USL three for three and Massachusetts five for five. 57-51, we've got a little over 15 minutes left to go here in the second half. Massachusetts leading by six, the last game they'll play here at the place they call the cage. And they want to make it a winning effort if they possibly can. Yes, uh, back to man-to-man -man now. The Cajuns from the Sun Belt Conference, Massachusetts from the Atlantic 10. Good interconference game. In Malloy, long pass that won't get it done. Bad turnover. Eight-point lead now by the Minutemen. That's going to get some substitutions in the game in a hurry for USL. Brian Collins will be one of the people that comes in, along with Sean Griggs. Todd Hill goes to the bench, as does Carol Boudreaux. So Marty Fletcher making good use of his uh, reserves on the front line. Yeah, nobody touched that ball, so we'll bring it all the way back down underneath UMass's basket. This big trip, this could be a 10 point, 11 point lead with a three here. And ironically, since Barbie picked up his fourth following out, Matt, UMass is on an 8 0 run, so how do you figure, huh? Well, you don't want to play catch up from double digits in this type of atmosphere, so I think the next five minutes very, very important for USL. Get this lead back to a manageable situation. Three, John, four points. John, UMass seems like a team that thrives on adversity. A three point effort doesn't go for Malloy. When Williams gets hurt, they come back. Good steal by Rowe. In the paint, he's got it. And that lead is, in fact, 10 points. But what happens when you have a key player go down, your team either splits up or you come closer together, and that's what's happened to this UMass team. And they did it when Barbie went out with his fourth foul here. Foul underneath, it's on Collins, and USL has got a problem. Number three on Brian Collins. Derek Kellogg will check in, replacing Dana Dingle. Kellogg had his best assist game against DePaul the last time out. Ten assists. There's John Calipari. That's his record here at uh, Curry Hicks. Well, it's like we said today, you'd like to see him do his recruiting at the new place, play in here with that kind of record. That's for Doesn't sure. work that way, though. When they fixed this place up about five or six years ago and made it uh, really a nice gym here, it took away a little of the uh, some of the uh, old-fashioned charm, but made it a much better arena for them to play in. Rowe has it knocked away, gets it back again just won't go for him. When this building uh, was in its previous state, they used to have a, a dirt running track where the ball went out of bounds. If it went in the dirt, they'd have to wipe it off before they gave it to the other team. It was uh, an interesting place. You played for the love of the game in that situation. <laughs> for sure. Starks misses from three-point land. Only his fifth three-point effort all year, he's missed the ball. Harper Williams is fouled going in by Macchione. Harper Williams can take over a game when he's down in the paint, can he, John? Well, he does such a good job of swinging either way. If you shade him to the right, he goes the other way. And he's so strong, as you mentioned. Now watch, shading him, going to reverse it. No way Macchione can get there in time. And again, you got to have help defensively. You cannot play behind him, which concedes that entry pass. Got to have help on either side. Fourth foul for Macchione. 13 points now for Harper Williams. So he is starting to inch toward his average, which is 17.3. Kennard Robinson coming in. He comes in with three fouls. Takes over for Jerome Malloy. A lot of versatility for UMass. Here they bring in a big guy for a guard. They can they can play with a lot of different uh, combinations. They've got some interchangeable people. You're right. Williams misses. 
He shoots 74% from the line. And John Calipari, interesting point. He felt that Harper Williams maybe took a little something for granted this year. Player of the year in the Atlantic 10 last year. After he got hurt, came back with a little more enthusiasm, a little more hunger after something was taken away from him because of the injury. Well, they're now on an 11-0 run, UMass, since Barbie went out this fourth foul. He may start to get worried about his starting spot at this point. Good rebound by Kennard Robinson, and we're in the danger territory now for USL. There is 12.51 left. They are down 62-51. to 51. And Watch Harper Williams operate inside. Good post up, but they're not getting a lot of help defensively. Williams underneath. He gets it over Brian Collins. 15 points for Harper Williams, and they just can't stop him in the paint. And if you're not going to help him out defensively, you're going to have problems. One person cannot do it. You've got to have help from that backside. 13-point lead. Brian Starks looking for the shot. Contested. Tough shot. And there is Rowe for the rebound. Good steal by Todd Hill. Starks gets it. That was a tough one to put in. He got a very fortunate uh, bucket there because he actually hit the rim. Lucky that went in. 10 points for Byron Starks. The lead is now 11, 64-53 for UMass. Williams underneath. He is just unstoppable. He's a one-man wrecking crew away. right now. There is a foul on Williams. So Harper Williams gets another foul. That's a fatigue foul. Look how tired he is. It's his third foul. Yeah, so they'll give him a little rest now. I caught reaching that time. When you get tired defensively, you reach rather than move your feet, get in position. John, is part of that the fact that he's, this is only his third game back and he's not quite in game shape yet? Could well be. You know, there's nothing, you, you can't duplicate conditioning that the game will give you. And yes, he's still feeling himself a little bit in terms of getting back in the flow, the normal rhythm. You can see he's really breathing hard. A couple minutes, he'll be back in. He's done a great job there is Kennard Robinson, who gave him some good minutes. Jerome Malloy comes back in. From small lineup now on the quarter, smaller anyway. Todd Hill three for four from the line. He's got eight points tonight, and he hits another one. Well, for USL, with about four or five minutes to go, they need to be about the six, seven point range. Down by 12 at the moment. There's Rowe for the rebound. He's had a good night on the boards. Wide open is Malloy, but knocked away by Boudreaux. So USL with a chance now to cut it to 10. A little over 11 minutes left to go in this game. Tony Moore drives. And Mike Williams ticketed for the foul. He doesn't like it. So when we come back, Tony Moore will be at the line, and his Cajuns are down 66-54. Well, we are happy to be here at uh, Amherst, Massachusetts, where UMass is doing a good job, and a big Monday here on ESPN. Georgetown and St. John's, a uh, big East matchup with Georgetown trying to climb back into the top 10. They're hovering in the top 20, or around it, and number one, Kansas, Walters is as slick a guard as you want against Missouri. Norm Stewart's got his team playing well. And more Midnight Madness. New Mexico State, Sam Crawford, terrific point guard against Utah State. That's Midnight Madness here on ESPN. And we get back to action here with University of Massachusetts ahead by 12. And the Raging Cajuns from USL trying to cut into that lead. Patience is very, very important for USL. Don't want to jack up the first shots if they're going to work the offense, get a good percentage shot. Michael Allen is the man they call on when they need a basket. He has 11 points, really not the total they'd like from him at this point. I'd like to see him maybe have a little more offensive output. Massachusetts shooting 44% in this second half, only 31% for USL. That explains a lot. Malloy, he gets it. Beat the zone trap that time. Got a good bucket. 
Jerome Malloy, the 6'3", 170-pound sophomore. Boy, John Calipari likes to see him around for a couple more years. It's a 12-point lead, and still a 12-point lead, and yet another rebound for Lou Rowe. Williams underneath. He will be fouled by Griggs. I don't know who jumped higher that time. Harper Williams or John Calipari. We had a great <laughs> view of him right here. And at the same time, both of them left their feet. He is animated, isn't he? Oh, you like that. A lot of enthusiasm, excitement for the game. Again, I think his players really feed off that enthusiasm and excitement. There's Harper Williams. Williams has performed very well in this game as he has in the last two since he came back from having a broken hand. He was out for nine games. Got a lane violation. So the last one won't count. It's 69-56. 13-point lead. All right, USL has got to start making a dent in this lead. They've got the firepower to do it. They've got to get it going right now. Make sure that Rowe had done well on the boards. He has nine rebounds. And in fact, the University of Massachusetts is out rebounding USL 31 to 22. USL got to have more ball movement. Got to have more motion. Everybody standing around. Boy, Todd Hill needs to hit that one, doesn't he? To loosen things up. That's two makeable shots the last two trips down that they haven't come up with. So UMass comes back with a chance to extend this lead to 15. Wide open is Dana Dingle, and he gets it. USL gambling with the trap. UMass correctly identifying it, getting easy baskets. Oh. Oh. USL quick timeout to talk about. So the Cajuns say, we want to talk things over. They are down by 13, and time is not on their side. 9.08 remaining. We'll be back. Well, I was there for that boxing, and I'm here for this basketball. Al Bernstein along with John Albright, where you see University of Massachusetts with that lead, and uh, here's how they're getting it. Good recognition. They beat them backside. Dana Ding with an easy two points. Good job of recognizing the pressure and then making the defense pay for the gamble. Tony Barbie back in the game, and uh, he is playing with four fouls, but boy, when he went out, they did a great job. But that's a turnover. Both teams cooling off a little. Both teams above 50% in the first half, and UMass just under 50 in the second half, but USL really hasn't been able to keep pace. And when they shoot under 45%, USL struggles has not done well. And that's true of most times. Michael Allen. They need some offense from him in the, the tenth rebound of the game for Lou Rowe. He is really stepping up in this ball game. As he has been in his last several games. His last five games, he's averaging 17 points. Doing well in the rebounding department as well. So with 8.23 left, a 13-point lead, and Massachusetts has the ball. Now for UMass now, too early to put in the deep freeze, but you can be selective. Spread your offense. Sean Griggs, he is great at steals. As you said, he led the Southeastern Conference in steals when he was with LSU. That turns into a basket for Tony Moore. And John Calipari with a smart timeout. He says, I don't want any runs. So he's ahead by 11, and we'll be back to see if they can... Win this one at the cage. We'll be back. We are back. Those are the fans here at the University of Massachusetts attending the last game they will attend, the last men's collegiate game anyway here in this building as UMass moves to the Mullins Center after this. Tony Barbee inbounding the ball. UMass with a 71 to 60 lead. USL picking up the defensive pressure. Cheap steal. They can get it. 
And again for UMass, you don't want to put it in deep freeze. Hard to restart that offense if you put it away. And of course, the Cajuns are a very quick team. There's Williams underneath. No That's foul. Up. Great defense. Boudreaux will pick up his third foul after Griggs had made the block. Williams is so tough inside there, it's very hard not to follow him. Watch the help, though. He hasn't gotten this all night. Got the help. Boudreaux with the block. And then Griggs coming from the backside. That's one of the few times all night we've seen that defensive help inside. Harper Williams will shoot two. He has 19 in the game. And he misses again. Surprised him also. <laughs> you can see the reaction. Yeah. He didn't expect to miss that shot. Missed them both. Wow. Now USL a chance to get it to single digits. Important trip up for them. Michael Allen with a nice dish off to Griggs. Oh, it won't go. The tip won't go. Out of bounds. Griggs was already on the baseline when he touched the ball. Sean Griggs has got quick hands. He mentioned how well he does in the steel department. Marty Fletcher knows this is an important time in this basketball game. 7.26 left. His team is down by 11 in the most hostile environment you could ever imagine. Good job of beating the pressure, though. Rowe! Lou Rowe steps up and hits the jumper. He's got 11. So he is in double figures again. For six straight games now in double figures. Allen looking for the shot. Nice drive. Good dish off underneath. And Griggs gets it. It's on the dribble penetration by Allen set up that assist. Seven points for Sean Griggs. Came in here averaging only 4.3. When he penetrates, it's a whole different story, isn't it, John? That's a good job, and it puts the defense at odds. Let's get by that initial man. Another foul by Boudreaux. I believe that is his fourth. It is his fourth. Michael Williams will check in the ball and there is Carol Boudreaux who and there is Michael Williams who is moving in and Derek Kellogg will take a seat on the bench Williams with 11 points Double figure scoring game. He has done an excellent job in recent games. Just a sophomore. John Calipari jumping up and down, jumping jacks, trying to get his guys to get their hands up on defense. No doubt what he wants when he wants it is there. 75 62, 13 point lead now for Massachusetts after Lou Rowe hits the free throws. UMass and the man-to-man, -the -man. they were going to go to a matchup zone a little bit today, but they haven't done it. Tony Moore's shot won't drop, and when they don't shoot well, the Cajuns have a problem. Uh, both Marty Fletcher, Marty Fletcher said it to us, we need to shoot well. We need to have our shots drop because we do take a lot of them. A save, no backcourt violation. Still a 13-point edge for UMass. Allen for three. Uh -oh. Great feed and an excellent block by Tony Moore. So the Cajuns will come back with a Todd Hill comes back for USL as you look at Tony Barbie. And Cedric Macchione also coming back in. I think he wants some activity at the defensive so end. Let's see, I think he wants those hands up. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> Still a 13 point lead for Massachusetts. Now five minutes left to go, a little over five minutes. And the good shots are hard to come by for the Cajuns. First meeting ever between these two teams. And 
Offense is stagnant right now. Got to have more movement for USL. The stationary offensive is very easy to defend. Allen gets in position for a 15-footer, and he makes it. 13 points for Michael Allen. And uh, he came in here averaging 22, so he is below his season average, obviously. The leading scorer in the Sun Belt Conference right now. Look how active Williams is inside. Really does a good job working without that basketball. Puts himself in good position to get the entry pass. Very, very active in that paint area. Almost losing the handle as Malloy can't quite get the finger roll, and Boudreaux comes down with the ball. Well, UMass 4 and 1 in their conference with Atlantic 10, 11 and 4 overall. Looking to make it 12 and 4 if they can hang on here. Good drive and the basket, which will go. No, no basket. The basket does not count. Prior to the basket, Mike Williams gets the foul. Facetiously talking about the imbalance in the fouls is Marty Fletcher. UMass already in the one and one. It has been for some time. And they will give it back to the Cajuns. Three fifty one left. It's an eleven point lead for UMass, and they need a good shot here, does USL. Starks won't go, a three-pointer by Allen, yes! Well beyond the 19-9 three-pointer. That, that, that. that was a pro three-pointer and then some, so 75-67. An eight-point ball. And a 325, enough time to get it done still. Plenty of time for the Cajuns, and they almost get a steal. Harper Williams. He's got 21. And boy, his third game back after he broke a hand, he continues to be hot. Byron Starks. And boy, he has had a tough shooting second half. And that's hurt the Cajuns, but then they have all shot poorly. Three-pointer by Williams, no. And Boudreaux, another rebound. Bad pass, and Williams picks it off. And then a foul by Boudreaux. Williams will go for three. And that is five on Carol Boudreau. He's out of the game. What a sequence there. A big one for Massachusetts. Well, it's a 10-point game. USL's got the ball. They're going the other way. Poor outlet pass. And now a three-point opportunity. Scoreboard has them up by 12 now, 79-67. Again, it was a 10-point play. The basket's going to count and a three-point opportunity. For Mike Williams, USA with a chance to cut it to eight or seven. Well, on ESPN, boy, you will see every conference that you want. If you like, whatever conference you like, you're going to get it. On Big Monday, you see the lineup, Super Tuesday, the Wednesday jam session, whatever you like, you got it right here on ESPN. Your source for college basketball. I'll tell you, and you're, where's your next game, John? Where are you going? Going west, going out to the WAC. And this, this, in fact, is the 100th game of the season on ESPN. We, I, well, I'm honored to do the 100th game of the season with you. Still plenty to go, likewise. <laughs> 105 huh? left in this season. You're going to be bleary-eyed by the time the season is over, but we're seeing some great games like this one. 80-67, UMass with a 13-point lead. Michael, Michael Allen Got to pick up full court. 11. Surprised I didn't pick up full court that time. Need some pressure and some turnovers. Because from here on out, UMass, when they're fouled, they'll shoot two free throws. USA beyond that 10 team foul rule. Allen now with 18, approaching his average of 22, but oh, nice steal. Wide open, Griggs takes one too many dribbles. Malloy the other way, it won't go, and the tip won't go for Williams. That's Griggs, great hands. That's Mackey on him, he starts, jams it, it won't go. It's a little ragged. But Harper Williams says, I'll set things straight.
Williams poured in his 23rd point, a three-pointer by Allen. That may seal the fate of the Cajuns. 13-point lead with 133 left. Going to be tough now. Had a couple opportunities. Again, when they had a chance to cut it to eight, that bad outlet pass, never able to recover from that. Well, UMass is going to put this building to bed in the right way for them. Apparently winning the last game here at the Curry-Hicks Center, the Cage. They'll move on to the Mullen Center. And they have, in their first meeting ever with the Raging Cajuns, look like they're going to come away with a win. From here forward, they will be cageless. And Rowe puts an exclamation point on it with that jam. What an excellent game. 16 points for Lou Rowe. Michael Allen gets two, but put this one in the win column for UMass. Marty Fletcher wants a timeout. And for one of the last times, they're roaring at the cage. We'll be back to finish it out. We return to Massachusetts. Al Bernstein along with John Albright. You see the score, 84-71. Massachusetts with only 47 seconds left to go. Looks like they are going to close things out in this building with a win. Rose Rowe, boy, did Lou Rowe have a good night tonight. 16 points and uh, about 11 boards. He was strong, John. He certainly was. And the rage in the cage uh, about to explode here. Well, the Rage and Cajuns would have liked a better effort. Their record is going to slip to 12 and 7. UMass will be 12 and 4. And both these teams will go back to their conferences. All the remaining games for USL are conference games. And as they put a closer on this, there's a foul on Tony Moore. With only 30 seconds left to go. Out of emotion tonight, and uh, there's always emotion in this building, but more tonight. And that man, John Calipari, was worried, wasn't he, about the way his team was playing? He was very concerned. The last couple of practices was not pleased at all with his team's performance, worried that they were the intensity wasn't there. But in the second half, I think their defensive play much better in the second half, and they made the plays that they needed to. But it'll be interesting, as they move to the new facility, they'll lose some of the intimacy that this smaller version uh, has and there's not many of these type places left in college basketball and in the bigger building they will uh, get a lot more people in there but as you say we'll lose some of what made this place special Michael Allen gets some points he has uh, been the major offensive weapon in the second half for USL Lou Rowe will come out of the ball game and boy I'll tell you what as Derek Kellogg comes in Lou Rowe with a terrific ball game Performed extremely well, both in scoring and on the boards. He grew, his, up, he grew up a lot also when Williams, Harper Williams was out with his injury. Just a sophomore. Michael Allen gets, uh, gets him. And so with just seconds remaining, what started here in 1931 is going to end tonight. And it'll end on a note that would uh, make all those folks happy that used to crowd in here in all those years. Well, the lip, dipsy doo doesn't work for the Cajuns. Double dribble call on Moore that time. And this crowd warming to the moment. Marty Fletcher is sensing that. It's going to go ahead and shake hands with John Calipari with five seconds to go and get out of here quickly. Well, John Calipari wants to make a call. He's right in front of us. He's got to go on the PA system and make an announcement to the crowd. They, they, they want to make sure the fans don't rush this build, this uh, core floor. Time out. Guys, listen now. Again, I'm going to tell you. Greatest fans in the world. Greatest band in the world. Listen. Ho. Oh, please. Do, we're still practicing here. The women still play here. The cage is going to be here another 60 years. Don't screw it up and mess up this floor, the backboard, the rims, or anything. You've been great all year. Classy fans, the best in the country. Don't screw it up. John Calipari appealing to these fans. And the game is, is over. Even with a few seconds left, they've decided it is over. 84-74. And UMass goes out a winner here at the cage. And this crowd didn't exactly heed his advice, but hopefully they'll be well behaved as they storm onto the court. 
It is the last men's collegiate game that will be played here. The women's team here will play. So it has been 62 years of some great basketball here in this building. It comes to